Jesus said, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Good morning, and welcome to our service of morning prayer here at Trinity Church's Chapel. And today is Thursday, the 2nd of April. So happy to share this service with you this morning. Today, my name is Peggy Hodgkins. I'm the rector here at Trinity. And today we are remembering in the church calendar the Apostle of the Wilderness, whose name was James Lloyd Breck, a priest in the 19th century. Who was James Lloyd Breck? He was probably one of the most important missionaries of the Episcopal Church. He was called the Apostle of the Wilderness. Born in Philadelphia in 1818, he was greatly influenced by William Augustus Muhlenberg when Breck attended his school in Flushing, New York before entering the University of Pennsylvania. Muhlenberg inspired him when he was just 16 years old to dedicate himself to a missionary life. The dedication was crystallized when he was at General Seminary and with three of his classmates there in New York City, uh, they decided to go out west and found a religious community at Neshota, Wisconsin, which in 1844 was on the frontier. And Neshota became a center of liturgical observance, of pastoral care, of education. And these men were able to visit isolated families, establish mission stations, and probably for the first time since the Revolution, Episcopal missionaries were the first to reach the settlers. Neshota House flourished and became one of the seminaries of the Episcopal Church. And then uh, James Lloyd Breck organized St. Columba's mission for the Chippewa people. It laid the foundation for work among the Native Americans by their own Native priests. And although the mission itself did not survive, it laid the foundation for future missions of that sort. Breck ended up marrying in 1855 and settled in Ferry Bow, Minnesota, where there is a, an Episcopal school, and where his mission was also associated with one of the first cathedrals in the United States, first Episcopal cathedrals. He also founded Seabury Divinity School, which later merged with Western Theological Seminary, and that became Seabury Western. Later, he went to California, inspired by the opportunity of founding a new theological school. His schools at Benicia, California did not survive, but the five parishes which he did found did survive, and the church in California was strengthened immensely through his work. He died prematurely at the age of 55 in 1876. And so we, today we remember priest and apostle to the, mission, apostle to the wilderness, James Lloyd Breck. Morning prayer begins with the confession on page 79 in the Book of Common Prayer, or you can also go online to bcponline.org, Book of Common Prayer, bcponline.org, and follow along there. Or you can just listen to the prayers and pray with me. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. Our psalms for today are 130 and 131 and 132. But first, let us begin with the Benighty on page 82. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. Turning to our psalms for today. Psalm 131, 132. begin with 131. O Lord, I am not proud. I have no haughty looks. I do not occupy myself with great matters or with things that are too hard for me. But I still my soul and make it quiet. Like a child upon its mother's breast, my soul is quieted within me. O Israel, wait upon the Lord from this time forth forevermore. Lord, remember David and all the hardships he endured, how he swore an oath to the Lord and vowed a vow to the mighty one of Jacob. I will not climb under the roof of my house nor climb up into my bed. I will not allow my eyes to sleep nor my eyelids slumber until I find a place for the Lord a dwelling for the mighty one of Jacob. The ark, we heard it, it was in Ephratah, we found it in the fields of Jerem. Let us go to God's dwelling place. Let us fall upon our knees before his footstool. Arise, O Lord, into your resting place, you and the ark of your strength. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness, let your faithful people sing with joy. For your servant David's sake, do not turn away the face of your anointed. The Lord has sworn an oath to David. In truth, he will not break it. A son, the fruit of your body, will I set upon your throne. If, I keep, if your children keep my covenant and my testimonies that I shall teach them, their children will sit upon your throne forevermore. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired her for his habitation. This shall be my resting place forever. Here will I dwell, for I delight in her. I will surely bless her provisions and satisfy her poor with bread. I will clothe her priests with salvation and her faithful people will rejoice and sing. There will I make the horn of David flourish. I have prepared a lamp for my anointed. As for his enemies, I will clothe them with shame. But as for him, his crown will shine. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our reading today is from 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 7 to 18, 
2 Corinthians 3, verses 7 to 18. Now if the dispensation of death, carved in letters on stone, came with such splendor that the Israelites could not look at Moses' face because of its brightness, fading as this was, will not the dispensation of the Spirit be attended with greater splendor? For if there was splendor in the dispensation of condemnation, the dispensation of righteousness must far exceed it in splendor Indeed, in this case, what once had splendor has come to have no splendor at all because of the splendor that surpasses it. For if what faded away came with splendor, what is permanent must have much more splendor. Since we have such a hope, we are very bold, not like Moses who put a veil over his face so that the Israelites might not see the end of the fading splendor. But their minds were hardened. For to this day, when they read the Old Covenant, that same veil remains unlifted, because only through Christ is it taken away. Yes, to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their minds. But when a man turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being changed into his likeness from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together the Song of Zechariah, found in your prayer book on page 92, Canticle 16, the Song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark. Chapter 10, 17-31. As Jesus was setting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and said, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. Do not kill. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and mother. And the young man said to him, Teacher, all these things I have observed from my youth. 
And Jesus, looking upon him, loved him and said to him, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. At that saying, the countenance of the young man fell, and he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. And Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It's easier for a camel to, to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And they were exceedingly astonished and said to him, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With people it is impossible, but not with God, for all things are possible with God. Peter began to say to him, Lo, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the sake of the gospel, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many that are first will be last, and the last first. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. out to me from our readings this morning is a sense of freedom, the freedom that we have knowing Christ as our Savior. We don't have that veil that comes between us that St. Paul refers to that, that Moses put over himself. When he came down the mountain, he was literally glowing from his encounter with God face to face at the top of Mount Zion. But we, through Christ, have the ability to pray to Jesus directly. We have the freedom to encounter the living Christ in our prayers and in our devotions, in our communal worship. Even though we can't communally worship right now, that doesn't take away the freedom that we have to pray, the freedom that we have to get to know our loving God so much better. Jesus talks about how hard it is for someone who has wealth to enter into God's kingdom. And why is that? It's that wealth makes us think we are freer to do more, but sometimes it becomes such an encumbrance that it turns our focus away from what is true and what is really meaningful in life, what it is that Jesus is calling us to, to do and to be as Christians. So we can't let wealth impede our path. We give our wealth to the poor, and we support the ministries of the church. And truly, we are free to serve and to love God uh, in, a, in a much more holistic way. So today, we remember also from the Song of Zechariah the idea of freedom. We're free to worship God without fear. We're free by the forgiveness of our sins. And we're free through the compassion of our God to embrace the new life that waits for us when we get through this virus and also um, as we get through Holy Week and come to that beautiful Easter morning a week from Sunday. Our next canticle is the Song of Simeon, which also refers to freedom. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The Collect for the, the Last Week of Lent. Almighty God, you alone can order the unruly wills and affections of sinful people. Grant to us, your people, that we may love the thing which you command, and desire that which you promise, that so among the sundry and manifold changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed, where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Collect for James Lloyd Breck, the Apostle of the Wilderness. Teach your church, O Lord, we pray, to value and support pioneering and courageous missionaries whom you call as you called your servant, James Lloyd Breck, to preach and teach and plant your church on new frontiers. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A Collect for Guidance. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now I invite your prayers your intercessions and thanksgivings. O oh Lord, we pray for all who suffer from any illness, especially the coronavirus, for all who suffer from any grief or adversity. We pray for our healthcare workers, doctors, nurses, cleaning staff, administrators who are keeping our hospitals going. We pray for the city of New York in crisis now. We pray for calm and courage 
among all your people in this time. We pray for those on Trinity's prayer list. For Ron, for Suzanne France, for Julie Robbins, for Bob and Aaron, for Paul Suchland, for Deb Valentine, for Mira Azarm, for Suzanne France, for Joy Shaw, Peter Swan, Adam DiVanere, Lisa Faberini, Drew Lipner, for Kathy, Steve Madison, Jimmy Stanek, John, for Claudia, Sean, Sullivan, Lucy, Janet, Tom, and Dorothy, and any others we may now name either silently or aloud. And we pray for the souls of all the departed, especially those whom we love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.